G'day folks, Andy here from McDowell Manor. So I'm just here near the aquaponics. One of the great troubles I've discovered is, geez, it's hard to see a black fish in a black tank of water. So what I figure I need to be able to do is do something that will herd those fish from one end of the tank right the way down towards the other end which should make it relatively easy then for me to catch a fish. So as always we have a harebrained scheme and I'll give you a look at this harebrained scheme so you can see what you reckon. So I think I'll use my ever faithful 19mm polypipe uh, which is used for irrigation. You can see I've started cutting her up. Got a few corners, a few T-junctions in that there bag. And what we'll do is we'll make a frame, a rectangular frame. In theory, pretty close to the dimensions of the tank. Um, I'll put a bar down the middle of it with polypipe to try and strengthen it up a bit. That's what those T-junctions are for. Let's me put a bar up the center and then I'll wrap it in um, some of that nylon fly screen, which should work pretty well as a net. Now the idea of that is it'll let me keep the fingerlings that I'm about to get up one end of the tank whilst also pushing the big boys down the other end of the tank in theory. So we've got a couple of big challenges. One is how the bloody hell am I going to anchor the thing so it doesn't just wobble all over the place whenever a fish comes near it. Um, and part of that problem will be solved if I just fill it full of water. That should make the polypipe a lot heavier bit more sturdy and as time goes on I'm going to try and work out a way to build like a sort of a, a U-hook that will allow me to hook it up the top of the tank on both sides and that should keep it relatively stable um, in theory <laughs> so let's watch this little crazy idea develop and see how we go eh? So we now have a top and a bottom that are pretty much the same as each other. Um, obviously one turns upside down, that's why they look like they bend in slightly different ways. I reckon that'll straighten up anyway to be honest, but I've done one upside down just to make sure that if it doesn't straighten up, it won't matter. So trying to put the sides, the two sides and the middle strut between the two. And essentially we've got our frame. Jam that frame in to give it a test run. It fits under that side. I'll just drop back a bit so you can see that's a, just a dress side. Um, I wanted it to fit under that side and under the opposite side, which it does. See that bit of a kink? That's a good thing. That means it's pressing up reasonably hard against the sides. Haven't got the mesh on yet. I might actually drop the height a little bit. For some reason it's ended up a bit higher than I wanted, so I might take a bit of, bit of height out of those uprights. Uh, but otherwise it looks like it's going to work quite well. Final product, what I added was a little upright, which you can see pokes up to there. And that'll allow me to move it up and down between those grow beds. And they can't really see is the gap there. So I'll just slide it up and down that gap. Um, so it looks like it's going to work pretty well. If we can get you a look at the boys. But not a fair bit of steam now, they're a pretty good size. Uh, hence my desire to um, get that screen in so I can catch them. There's a couple of really very big and uh, they're what's called a size dimorphic fish, which means they grow at different sizes, different rates, uh, depending on who gets what tucker, I suppose. And that's your final dodgy product there, folks. I kept going to be neat, like I was going to tuck that excess from the side around and zip tie that on. Uh, but I think that's probably a mistake, because... The extra little bits flapping about like that I suspect will stop fishes trying to slip through on the sides. Uh, like I say, I've built it a little bit wider than the tank to try and prevent that. Uh, it doesn't have to do a perfect job, mind you. That's 
you pro probably gathered that already by the look of it. Um, I just want it, like I say, to be able to keep the littlies down there in mostly. If they get through, I don't care because they'll go back at feed time. And the big boys don't eat them, so I'm not worried about that. But I do need to keep the big boys out from where the little guys are eaten. Because uh, otherwise the littlies will get no food whatsoever. And there it is in place. So what happens is that just gets turned sideways, swings the screen out across the um, widthwise across the tank. Uh, obviously I've got to duck over the odd board. There's three sets of well there's not, there's two sets of boards, I tell a lie, the other set up the end and you can't really count that because it's not gonna be in my way. Um, and to be honest with you, look, if, even if I went that far, I'd be bloody happy, but I won't. I'll go under that one and go up a fair bit when I do it. Um, it's good. I really think it's going to be a good little solution. I filled the poly pipe with water. Um, and I don't know if you can see or not, but no, you can't. She's not floating. That was my big worry, was that it would float. And I was hoping that the water trick would do the work, and it did. Really, what I'm amazed, I took the... Um, the wire cover off, oh, took the wire cover off, and I can actually see into the tank a whole lot better, um, which is pretty good because I'll be able to spot what's going on, and I couldn't really do that before. So there you go, bonus, a little bonus extra. All right, so I think that's all I'll show you for now. I'll do another video when I actually do the harvest. Um, not about to do it yet because I haven't got the fingerlings yet. So I'll wait until those guys rock up and we'll do a bit of a harvest and put the fingerlings in and leave the screen in place sideways across. Um, there you go. Alright folks, hope you have a good weekend coming. See ya.